Hello and OMG, welcome back to my channel where today we have a very like tea filled video, if you feel me, because I'm going to be creating another new little series of makeup brands that are deemed as overrated. And what I want to do here in these videos is show you maybe some reasons why these brands are now known as being overrated, but some hidden gems within these brands that are actually worth your time and your money. So if you want to see which ones they are and what exact Morphe products I used to get this look, then go ahead and keep on watching. So before we get into the nitty gritty of what products I used and whatnot, I wanted to go over the pros and cons of Morphe. Now let's go over the cons first because people tend to like to complain first and look at the negative side of brands and things, then first look at the positive side. Now I wanna say one of the problems with Morphe that people feel the pe that people feel the reason is that they are overrated is because they collaborate so much with so many influencers who are problematic and unproblematic. And I think people get over seeing the same people over and over and over again, um, getting these collaborations with Morphe. What I also think is that people see Morphe as this brand that kind of like was a branch off of MAC Cosmetics, but it's supposed to be like the cheaper version. But as they gained their popularity, um, they kind of drifted towards doing collaborations and releasing makeup in such a fast pace that it almost felt like color pop. It almost feels like every time you go to Morphe's Instagram, they have another collaboration or another collaboration. Rather than them being known for certain products and maybe, I don't know, certain color hues or whatever, I think people get lost in all that Morphe does offer. And I think that's why people do see them as overrated. I do also think that another reason why people think Morphe is overrated is, um, is because, let's be real, they, they need to make money. And I, I paused the way I did is because at the end of the day, there are certain makeup, there are certain CEOs of makeup brands who truly care about their consumers, who care about their audience. I think Morphe does, but they're also very aware of where the money is at. And so what they did was they collaborated with a ton of influencers, dropped some influencers, and then started working with TikTokers and now are going back to working with unproblematic influencers if you guys catch my drift and so i think that people feel like okay this is like overrated now like they can't decide what direction they want to take they're not consistent with who they align their beliefs with and that's why people just feel like all right it's overrated it's cheaply priced it's cheap makeup um it doesn't work for me and i just don't support who they support now the pros of morphe and especially me as a consumer is that it's affordable there's a lot of people who actually do appreciate the pricing of Morphe and the products are honestly not as bad as people kind of hype them up to be. If you take your time with your Morphe products, you can really learn how to use their palettes and use their products and get them to work for your face. Um, and so a lot of like the pros that people have with Morphe is they do like who are the unproblematic influencers that they do collaborate with. They do have a lot of products that are very affordable, especially in today's day and age where things are so unsteady. You still have your makeup lovers out there who are not willing to drop a whole bag on makeup. And that's where Morphe comes into play because it's super cheap. It's honestly very rationally priced and you can use an influencer's discount code to get additional money off, which is honestly really, really nice. Now I went through my entire collection of makeup and dug up the Morphe products that I really do like and I'll go into detail on the ones that I do feel are overrated in this video as you guys get ready with me. But I wanted to show you guys some palettes that I feel like if they are still available and you can get your hands on them, these are ones that I would recommend to you that are not overrated. This one has the old school packaging. This is the 35K palette. I don't think this one is going to be available, but Morphe has so many palettes that I'm sure you guys can find something very similar to it. But if you are in the market for a cool tone palette, this one is amazing. Now this next palette I have right here, I was gifted. It is the 25 B bronzed mocha palette. This is honestly a bronzed, like if you're into bronze looks, this is your dream. This is a stunning palette. You get a bunch of warm tones as well as a lot of shimmers. Very, very nice. This next one I did get in a boxy charm. It is the Morphe 15D Day Slayer palette. This is a really nice palette for the fall and for the summertime because you get so many warm tones and you get a bunch of those bright colors that can give you those pops of color that you need. Of course, I have the classic Jaclyn Hill Original palette. You guys don't even need me to explain this one to you. This I think will always be one of the biggest favorites of 
Morphe. As you guys can see, I did hit pan on one of the colors. It's a phenomenal palette. It is a must. This palette right here is the Second Nature 3502 palette. This one looks terrible on their website. Absolutely terrible. They have the worst picture ever for it. But in person, I'm trying to open it. It is absolutely stunning. This is perfect for a year round palette. Reason is you get all those warm tones, you get bright tones, you kind of get cooler tones, you get your shimmers, you get your pops of color, you're good. Of course, I have the Morphe Manny MUA palette. This one right here was really, really nice. What's nice about it is it's a lot smaller than the big clunky palettes. I think that is another reason why people think Morphe is overrated because their palettes are just too darn big. This one is a good size, so you get a do color wheel and you do get two highlighters. So you basically get two major products of Morphe all in one. So now that we went over the T of Morphe, let's go ahead and get into the look. So if you wanna see actually which products I do recommend to you guys, and again, if you guys wanna hear in detail which ones I do think are overrated, then just keep on watching. Grab a snack, it's kind of a long video, so yeah. All right, so as I said in the beginning is that I'm going to be using one of these palettes. Now, for today's look, I wanted to create something that's more on like the pinky red side just because we are heading more towards Valentine's Day. February is like known as a month of love. Whether you feel indifferent towards Valentine's Day, it's just that month where all we see are those looks. So I was like, let me just do a typical look. Now, this palette is the 3502 Second Nature Palette. So on Morphe's website, the picture doesn't do it justice. It looks like there's one red color and a bunch of browns, but I wanna show you guys the palette here on camera. You guys can see it looks nothing like it does on the website. Like you actually get shimmers and you get pops of red and you have basically oranges and you have your, your warmer tones, you get a black. So I'm not sure why on their website. Can you guys see? Oh no, my phone kinda like. Like, do you guys see? Those look like two completely different things. So in my intro, I got into basically the pros and cons of this brand and why people love it, why people hate it, um, why people think Morphe is overrated. And again, I really feel like it depends on your technique. So I wanna show you guys a couple of techniques. Well, you guys are gonna see how I use these Morphe palettes. Again, they're nice, they're big. This is $25, it has a ton of colors, it has 35 shades, it is just really, really nice. Looking at this palette, I've used almost every color I could tell by what I have pressed into. So what I'm going to do is start off with using these colors right here. I'm going to start off using, I wanna say, what should we do for our transition? Let's think, let's think, let's think. We're gonna use this color right here. There is no names on it. We're just gonna go ahead and use a Luxie brush. And we're gonna go ahead and start to build up the transition. Now, my eyes are primed with the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. Um, actually, the, the moisturizing one. Why do I always forget? So what you have to do basically with Morphe eyeshadows is you kind of have to stamp them in and then blend. And I think that's the biggest, the biggest criticism about the palettes is that people think they're chalky and they're not good quality, but they are. Um, if you guys watch Harouche, and I've mentioned her before on my channel, she's a celebrity makeup artist, um, she has stated on her channel and being a celebrity makeup artist, you know that she and a pro makeup artist, you know that she has probably used every makeup brand known to man. And she has stated that it's not necessarily the product's quality, but it depends on your technique. So with Morphe, I feel like this brand is not a shitty brand, to be honest with you. Um, the brand is very, very affordable. Um, I did state in the beginning why I believe people just, you know, are sick of it and think that it's just a trash brand. When it comes down to their palettes, they're very affordable. 35 shades for $25 and you can use an influencer's discount code. You really can't beat that to be honest with you. I don't know any other brand that you get that many shadows for such a cheap price. And I really feel like it's about technique. You just have to take the extra time when using a Morphe palette to get the colors to work for you. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So as you guys saw, I had to stamp this color in, like pack it in, and then slowly blend it. And you can see it doesn't look patchy. It looks good. Mind you, this is not a Visor palette. This is not a high-end palette, but it's just about making the colors work. And I think that if people took away all the cons of Morphe, 
and however they've been problematic or whatever in the past. And you just looked at it from an angle of makeup and how can I get these products to work? And you just, you're just patient with having to use your products. You can get really, really beautiful looks using Morphe products. I, I'm a big fan of Morphe. I'm a regular consumer just like you guys. There's a lot of times who I don't like who they collaborate with. There's some times where I do like who they collaborate with. Um, there's certain product releases I like, and there's a lot of product releases that I don't like. Um, and, but I think that's for any brand. The problem with Morphe, obviously, is that, you know, they choose sometimes people who a lot of people don't like or dislike, um, or, or they like, and people associate the negativity of those influencers with the products, I feel. But if you took the products for what they were and take away the influencers, take away whoever they've collabed with, take away any problems, you guys can get really nice looks and you guys can get a lot out of your products that you have from Morphe. Like see how beautiful it literally, all I had to do was just stamp in the product and then blend. It's that simple. So I wanna do some more pinky colors. So I'm gonna take this one right here. In person, it's more of like, it's like a brick red and like a pink had a baby. That's kind of what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my same brush and then just kind of go over more of like my transition right here. And this color right here is a little bit more pigmented so you don't have to stamp it on as much. You can pretty much just start off by blending it. And when you're using a Morphe palette, when you dive into the colors, you'll be able to tell which eyeshadows you need to stamp and pack on versus which shadows you need to blend, which ones you can get away with just blending. Like this one right here, I can get away with just blending it in. I didn't really have to like stamp it in to get the full effect of the color. I can pretty much just place it as you can see and blend it. Now I do feel that Morphe did kind of screw some people over. Um, this isn't a drama channel, so I'm not gonna get into like the logistics of like the names of influencers and whatever, but I do feel like there was a couple influencers who got the short end of the stick with Morphe. Um, and I don't think that's fair. So I think that's maybe why a lot of people kind of steer away from Morphe now. Um, but I've said this in a previous video as well, is that at the end of the day, you guys, this is makeup. Like it's really not that big of a deal. Like let's just take products for what they are and make them work, especially if they're affordable. You can see how beautiful, like everything is just coming together. And that's why when people talk so much crap about Morphe eyeshadow palettes, it just makes me think like, well, are they taking the time to get to know their palette? I feel like makeup is a relationship. Like you have to get to know your products and get to know how they work on your skin. And if there's problems, how do you fix it? How do you go forward? How, how do you make this product worth it? So the next color I'm going to tap into is the one right next to it. In person, it is more of like a magenta color. I'm pretty sure you guys could pick it up on camera. And this palette's really nice. I really wish their website did its due diligence. Like, this is a really good palette for fall, spring, winter because, and I know I ramble a lot, but I wanna give you guys as much detail because I'm a consumer just like you. What's really nice about it is for the fall, you get all these colors right here. For the winter, if you wanna do more cool tone looks, you get all these colors right here. For the summer, if you want more bright looks, you can mix all these colors right here. You get a ton of transition shades, you get shimmers, you get new mattes, you're good to go. So I'm just gonna take this color and pack it on the edge. So as you guys can see, I'm stamping this color in. This is a color right here where I noticed that I do need to stamp it in before I blend it out, just like I'm doing like this. Just stamping that in my inner corners. Kind of like rounding it out. And I'm gonna drag it out. I hope you guys will enjoy like this little mini series I'm doing of makeup brands. And I've seen this trend here on YouTube um, of influencers talking about makeup brands that they feel are overrated and underrated. Um, I have a very large makeup collection, so I have a lot of products from a lot of brands and I want to cover, like, for example, this is a brand that people feel is overrated, but I want to touch base on 
what products I feel like are worth your while and which ones you can really make work if you have them in your collection or if you're thinking about giving one of these brands a second chance and revisiting them. That is what I'm here for. I wanna show you guys like, hey, you guys can actually make these affordable palettes work for you. You guys can make a lot of this work for you. Um, and if you wanna revisit the brand and not have your expectations set so high just based off of other people's opinions, you guys might find yourselves falling in love with certain products. And I've said it before, like I'm a really, really chill person. It takes a lot for me to get really upset, um, especially over makeup. I feel like, okay, I gotta figure this out. Like if I don't like a product, like let me figure out what's wrong with it. For example, um, when the Huda Beauty Original Faux Filter Foundation came out, I bought it, I hated it. I could not understand why it was like coming off and why when I put on my concealers, it would wipe away. Figured out, it's my primers. I need to use better primers. I needed to use primers that gripped the foundation, that didn't allow it to move. And while I put on um, the other layers of makeup that I wear, since I wear so many layers, how can I get it to work? And I did. And that's, I think, the point of these brands is, yes, they are overrated in a sense, but if it's affordable and you see something you like, you wanna give it a try, it, you could probably make it work. So you guys know I love to layer on glitter like y'all saw that beauty creations review i did on their palette to tell you guys about the brand and i pretty much used every single shimmer in that eyeshadow palette so what i want to do is i want to layer these two pink shimmers right here you can't really see but this one is like a dark like almost lavender pink shimmer this one is a pink shimmer i might add some gold just depending on how if it's like not bright enough I'm just gonna go ahead and take a Luxie brush to do that. Stamp off the excess, and we're gonna go ahead and just place this here. Now these colors you obviously have to just pack on. I feel like that's for any shimmer, you just place it and you pack it on. You don't really blend out a shimmer. I feel like that's kind of like common sense in the makeup world. So yeah, this shimmer is going on dark. So we're gonna definitely lighten it up with that pink. And I wanted to do like a pinky look, but this turned into a magenta look real, real quick, but that's okay. Speaking of Morphe palettes, I do this thing where I try to use a different eyeshadow palette every single week because I pretty much do my makeup almost every day. It's just very therapeutic for me. I love doing my makeup. It just makes me feel put together. It makes me feel like the days actually feel normal and go by faster, especially if you're someone who works from home or is at home, you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go into that lighter pink, by the way. Um, so I do this thing where like, I try to use a different eyeshadow palette every day. And I try, or I'm sorry, every week. So once a week I'll use, I'll tell myself, you have to use that eyeshadow palette for the whole week, unless I'm filming. Um, and I try to use other products in my makeup collection just to make it, you know, seem like I'm using them. And pulling out all my Morphe palettes for this video, I was like, oh my God, like I have so many Morphe palettes that are actually pretty good. Like I need to revisit using them. I encourage you guys to do the same thing. I know my little sister is doing the same thing where she's like, you know, you had said that you use a different um, eyeshadow palette every week. So she's trying to do the same because she has, if not like just a large a collection as me. So I'm gonna go into that gold shimmer that I showed you guys. And I'm gonna try to lighten up the shimmer with that just to see. Okay, perfect. So this turned into like a magenta look. It's okay. It's still kind of on the pinky side, not really, but we're good. I love layering shimmers. I just feel like you get such like a, a grungy, like smoky effect. Oh, so pretty. This might be a long video, so if you haven't already gotten up, you have to get a snack, go get one because your girl likes to go in detail with you guys. Thank you for all the support and for watching. We have craft, and I said it before, we went over 800 subscribers, and to me that is like amazing. I'm like, oh my God, there's 800 people out there who like me. I think that's dope. I mean, because like in school, I mean, I didn't know 800 people, so it's crazy to think like, oh my God, there's 800 people who are potentially watching you. So for the brow bone, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this color right here. I'm not gonna do like something shimmery on the brow bone. Usually when I do a, um, a shimmery look on the lids, we keep the brow bone simple. I just feel like that's just too much. And this color's kind of orangey, but it's okay. My concealer is so light, it kind of mutes out the orange of that. 
want to just blend this in. Very, very nice, you guys. This is coming together so beautifully. So then the next step in my makeup routine is I pretty much like start to curl my lashes, but I'm gonna hold off to do that because I'm gonna do that off camera because I'm not using Morphe products for that step. But after that, basically the next step in my makeup routine is bronzer. Now you guys, if you have stuck with me since the beginning, you know that this Morphe Glam Bronze Icon Bronzer is my absolute freaking favorite. The packaging is from like a summer collection that released, I don't know, I think in 2019? It was in 2020, I think, but you guys can see I've hit pan. This is by far the best bronzer ever. Like if you guys have bronzers you hate and you're in the market for a bronzer, but you hate Morphe, unhate it because you will love this bronzer. I think you can use this like on your body too, but this is the most creamy, buttery bronzer you will ever experience. The packaging is now different. I think on their site, it's just like plain black, plain black packaging. They have multiple colors. Find your color, you will absolutely freaking love it. I wanna show you why. I like to use sometimes like these weird brushes to put on my bronzer. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and we're of course going to sculpt out the jawline because we want to look as snatched as possible. Yes, so good. Now we're gonna do the cheeks. It's just like so good. You guys see how beautiful and buttery that is? Like it goes on like legit like butter. This probably isn't the best brush, but I'm doing this thing where I have not cleaned my makeup brushes because it forces me to use makeup brushes that I have not been using. Because again, I do have a very large collection of makeup. I'm one of those who just, when I see a launch, I like it, I buy it. I told myself this year, you're not doing that girl. You need to use what you have. But do you guys see how beautiful, so, so beautiful. Let's do the other side. It's just so buttery, you guys. I like to kind of use a lot. This is also a really, really good bronzer for the summertime. Um, I just feel like it has more of like obviously an orange glow to it if you're someone who is my color, but I just feel like overall these are like really good to use in the summer. I think that's why they were part of like their bronzed collection or whatever, because it was like total like summer vibes, but it's just really good honestly all around to use. My baby hairs like don't stay, it's so frustrating. But next I'm going to go ahead and powder contour my nose using this bronzer. So let me just find a brush because I'm trying to use all my brushes that I have not used and it's getting difficult. Ah, oh, let's use whatever, let's use this brush. I'm gonna go ahead and take some. Now I'm just blending in this contour and I wanted to touch base really quick on Morphe brushes. There are some that I absolutely love that I think are 100% worth your money. But for example, this set of Morphe brushes with the white writing, I'm sorry, my little sister Ava, you gave these to me, you gifted these to me years ago. But my biggest complaint about certain Morphe brushes is the hairs literally when you're putting on your makeup get all over your face. And it's only some brushes, it's not all their brushes. So I think that's also why um, the whole overrated thing is a contributing factor to people not liking Morphe is because 
I mean, the hairs on the brush are kind of like all over the place, like as you guys can see, like right there. And the hairs get all over your face. But they do have really good foundation brushes. They have some really good blending brushes. Like some stuff is just absolutely amazing from them, but these are not it, sis. So the next point I want to touch on are the Morphe highlighters. Now, I do have the Manny MUA X Morphe palette, but I already did a video on that and I already covered the highlighters that come in that one. But this one is a classic and I know Morphe still sells it in store. I have seen it before. This was the Bretman Rock X Morphe highlighter palette. My mom had gifted this to me. This is such a good highlighter palette because you get all colors of the spectrum. You can use one for every different angle of your face. For example, you could hit the brow bone with this. You could use this on your nose, use these on your cheeks. Like it's just a really good overall palette. It's really, really fun. And I feel like it didn't get the hype that it deserved. And overall, Morphe highlighters are pretty good. I don't think I've seen a lot of people say bad things about their highlighters. If they have, I've missed it. But I wanna show you guys how I use these. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the second color. It does have a name, it's Vacation. I'm gonna go ahead and use it on my nose. I like more gold tone highlights, just like that. Like, look guys. And I'm gonna tap into the first one. It's called Bebe Girl. I'm gonna go ahead and put that down the bridge of my nose just to give it a little bit of extra pop. And I like to blend that out. I like to make it look more skin-like. Do you guys see? Like, that is so pretty. And the quality is really, really good on these highlights. They last all day. I have never had a problem with them, so that's why I recommend them to you guys. So I went ahead and added some blush, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my cheeks so I can show you guys why it's good on the cheeks. Now, I do this weird method. I don't know if it's just me being weird. I'm gonna use that same second color, Vacation, but I take like this kind of brush. I go ahead and I just apply like a line. Like you guys, come on, like that is so pretty. Just apply that line, like bitch, look at that. Go a little bit here. And I take the same brush that I used for my blush and I just blend it in. And it looks a little bit more seamless. Like you guys, look. So good. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up my eyes off of camera for the top of the eyes then we will resume the bottom and we will get to the lips i could show you some morphe products that are not overrated that probably are thought to be but you need them okay so i went ahead and added some salon perfect lashes i don't think i'm going to do eyeliner because i really like how the eyeshadow looks but we need to finish up the bottom of the eyes where did i put my eyeshadow on? sorry guys i was like organizing and then i totally just like rearranged now for the bottom of the eyes what colors shall we use i think i want to keep it light so we're going to go in with this like i think this was like the first color we used yes had to have been i really need to clean my brushes because your girl's running out of options here so i'm just going to take another luxie brush it's kind of just rounded and we're just going to like lightly smoke it out okay perfect yes 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 this is exactly what i wanted and this color for the bottom of the eyes is just easy to smoke it out. She is smoky. Okay, so the next product that I wanna go ahead and move on to that I feel is actually not an overrated product. There's a lot of people who do appreciate Morphe for this, and that is their liners. You can use these lip liners, eyeliners, whatever it is, but these lip liners you can use on your waterline. Just don't use them on your lips. You don't wanna rotate them germs. Um, but their lip liners are phenomenal. Like. They are so, so good. They are so, so cheap. Literally almost this entire thing is Morphe lip liners. And the reason why I have so many of them is um, prior to Black Friday, I didn't have a lot of lip liners. I just had my Kylie Cosmetics ones, my Ace Beauté ones, and all the random ones I get through BoxyCharm. And these were on sale, I think for $2.50 each, something really, really cheap. And I literally bought a ton of them. Like some of these here are not Morphe, 
but a majority of them are. And if you guys are skeptical about these lip liners, eyeliners, don't be. You will not regret it. You won't ever have to spend a whole lot of money on lip liners, eyeliners ever again if you're looking for something affordable. One of the colors I love to use on my waterline just to keep it natural, but to just also place something there is the Morphe. I think it's considered like a lip liner. I'm not sure, but it's in the color bamboo. It's like a skin like color. It doesn't come up too much on the waterline. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on so I can show you guys, but it just gives it just like a little extra, like like very, very subtle difference, but I love it because it opens up my eyes just a little bit more as you can see. Now they're lip liners. Girl, if one of their most popular colors is the color Sweet Tea, I have that one. I don't wanna use it for this video. I kinda wanna use something else, so let me see. So we have kind of like pinkish eyes. What kind of lip do we wanna do? So I have the color here, Makeup Talk, and it's a really, really pretty color. It kind of matches my eyeshadow. It's like a mauve top taupe, and Morphe has like the best sharpeners. Like I'm telling you, there's some, there's some overrated products, but there's some really good products. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply on the lip liner, and then we'll get to the lipstick. Butter, it goes on like butter. This is such a pretty color. If you guys are in the market and you want something more on the cool tone side, but it's still like a nude, Makeup Talk is your girl. So then their lipsticks. If you guys haven't already seen, I did a video on trying on a ton of Morphe lipsticks. I 100% recommend to you guys their cream lipsticks and um, their matte lipsticks, but not their mega mattes. The mega matte lipsticks I feel are overrated in the sense that they're very dry. When you put them on, they're very chalky. Now you can get them to work. I figured out how to get them to work is by priming um, my lips with something that's gonna make the application a little bit more smooth, or you can also apply on the mega mattes on top of your lips and apply something on top of them to give it just a little bit more hydration, but I wouldn't recommend those. These, however, I would. This is the color cream or creme or no it's the cream lipstick in the color wit this one right here really really good it's like a taupe it's like a mauve we're just gonna buy it on like beautiful you guys so so check that sound beautiful so I went ahead and took down my little pelitos because I wanted my little hairs to frame my face. But this is the final look. Now, one product that I don't have that is not overrated, that is 100% worth your money, is the Morphe setting spray that comes in the black can. Do not, I repeat, do not go out and buy the matte spray in the white bottle. That is an overrated product. And the reason is I have it, it's somewhere around here. I think I got so frustrated. I think I may have thrown it away. You squirt out the spray and it shoots at you in like a gel form. And I had to return one of them because of that problem. And then the second one did the same thing. So to me, that product is defective. However, if you guys need a darn good setting spray, the Morphe one in the black can is absolutely amazing. It has the most fine mist. It's just phenomenal. Makes your makeup last all day. I need to go out and get it. I'm out of it. So I do recommend that one to you. But overall, this is the final look. Like you guys can see, would you guys think looking at my face like I'm wearing Morphe products? Probably not because people trash the brand so much. It's hyped up to be so overrated now. But if you take the time to take a step back, revisit Morphe, you actually might find some products that change the makeup game for you. So anyways, I hope that you all found this video very informative and I hope it gave you guys a different look as to what is overrated about it and what is not. If you did like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you do get notified of every time that I do upload a video. It's 2021. Please still wear your mask. Always spread peace, love, and happiness. I will see you all in my next video.